Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video this morning. I trust and hope that you're doing really great and we're going to be taking a look at all that is going on right now. So we've got two new disturbances, both were highlighted last night, one of which is designated as an invest and we've also got our two active tropical cyclones out there and before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. And so let us go ahead and take a look at what is going on across the Caribbean and surrounding areas. So there we can see that uh, there isn't a whole lot happening this morning. We've got a couple of thunderstorms off the coast of Jamaica and also over in some spots across Central America. But for most other areas, it is a pretty calm morning that will be rather hot and sunny. Then over to the right side of our screen, there we can see uh, Hurricane Lee and a couple of thunderstorms were near Montserrat and Antigua but nothing too crazy going on over in the Lesser Antilles on a whole. As we go a bit further south here, we can see that little blob of thunderstorm activity in parts of the Southwest Caribbean and across sections of Colombia and Venezuela down in the Guyanas. Nothing much happening. Again, pretty calm and a sunny morning today. So let's now go ahead and talk about our active systems out there. And we're going to be kickstarting with our disturbances. So we're looking at the seven day graphical tropical with our outlook map coming from the national hurricane center and uh, there we've got our disturbances so the one that is closer to the cabo verde islands is designated as an invest invest 97l but I, I don't think that it is going to be developing into our next cyclone it is only given a 30 percent chance of formation through both seven days and 48 hours so conditions are only marginally conducive to support development of the system here however there's that next tropical wave just about to exit the African coast and that will be continuing westward for some time but then gradually make that turn up to the west northwest so that one I think has a better chance of developing over the next couple of days also a 30% chance but in terms of actually seeing something become of it models have been suggesting that this will happen uh, as I've pointed out in my other recent updates and so here we have the area being marked now and speaking of let's go ahead and take a look at what models have to show for it after which we'll go on to our active tropical cyclones so first up we have the gfs model and uh, let's see what it has to show there we have the forecast time and then as we head further out in time as we head to tomorrow going to tuesday there we've got lee and margo out there and then uh that next system developing as it makes its way to the west and then starts to take on that turn to the northwest so uh, gfs is expecting a scenario with uh, a lee-like scenario with this next tropical wave here that may develop as we head to the euro model now let's see what euro has to show again we're going out in time not seeing anything yet but then there we go we've got that low pressure area developing and uh, we don't see much development of it until as we head to the end of the week but the euro is also expecting that westward then northwestward track of the system why? Because we've got these storm systems out there, Lee, Margo, and they actually disrupt the subtropical ridge, which steers or tropical waves westward. So because of that, now they have that opportunity to move up to the north and curve out. So they're going to take it. As we head to the ICON model, ICON also expecting that system to form as we head to later this week and uh, start to move on that northwestward track. So we've got this consistency among our models that, hey, we will have some Something developing and it is going to be out to sea so it might not be a bother for the Caribbean so as the system gradually makes its way further from Africa and starts to take advantage of conducive and frontal conditions and that is actually being reflected on these satellite imagery in terms of its appearance then the formation chance will continue to increase until we have something the next name to be used for the hurricane season is Nigel so it looks as though this disturbance here is Nigel in the making. Now we're moving on to our active tropical cyclones and we're starting out with Margo. So there we've got Margo up there. It has been strengthened a little bit. Going on to the cone for cast sustained winds 50 miles per hour at the maximum and it is moving to the northwest at 8 miles per hour. 
and so it will continue to gain latitude over the course of this week and uh, it's likely to become a hurricane not anything too crazy out there but once we head to the end of this week and it accelerates into cooler waters uh, the environment will be unfavorable for any further strengthening so it's only going to be weakening until it eventually becomes post-tropical and dissipates out there not a problem for anyone and then now we're heading on to Lee so here we have Lee very close to the Caribbean but uh, not induced in a whole lot in terms of any heavy rainfall or very strong winds right now but if you're in leeward uh, the leeward Isles, you might notice these white feathery clouds way up in the atmosphere those are cirrus clouds coming from its outflow so let's go ahead and take a look at the latest cone forecast and here we've got it so lee has maximum sustained winds of 105 miles per hour so we weakened uh, even more so the National Hurricane Center was not anticipating this further weakening but I actually was because it was just not improving a whole lot on the satellite imagery so since its ILO replacement cycle on Friday it has not gotten itself together because wind shear has been disrupting the structure of the cyclone but uh, it is forecast to move into some more conducive shear that may allow for re-intensification and the National Hurricane Center still thinks that it could make it back up to cat for status i mean it's going to be moving very slowly so let's see how it takes advan uh, advantage of conditions once they become more conducive but then we can clearly see that turn up to the north which is expected later this week and the system is likely to pass to the west of bermuda but if close enough in proximity it could induce some tropical storm conditions at least so again if you're in bermuda you want to keep watch as we look at the model track guidance they're very tight on this so we've got some pretty good consistency see here with the next couple of days in terms of the forecast track of the hurricane and so guys that is pretty much what i wanted to share with you in this update so again we've got two new disturbances that have been highlighted and i really think that the one just about to make its way from the african coast will be our next name storm nigel so models have been very consistent about development and even though there were some uh, ensemble tracks in particular that showed that this could make it to the caribbean it seems likely that it will remain outside the region so that's some good news right there additionally we've got that next disturbance invest 97 l which may try to get itself together let's see what it decides to do over the course of the next several days and then we've also got our active tropical cyclones, Margo, which is not a bother for anyone. And Lee is remaining offshore, of course, inducing that dangerous surf. So those very rough seas out there. And later this week, it might pass very close to Bermuda, potentially inducing some impacts. And in the long term, maybe the northeastern part of the U.S. head into parts of Atlantic Canada may be affected by whatever is left of the hurricane. And so I hope you found this video to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be wise.